Live from Hollywood, it's the Tomorrow Show with Ray Bright. Yes, 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 yes! Oh! <laughs> Welcome to the Tomorrow Show. My name is Gray Bright. We have a massive show for you tonight. We'll be having ridiculous fun with virtual reality, artificial intelligence and neuroscience. And tonight's guest is the founder and CEO of AIO Robotics, Jens Vindau. Yeah. Let's talk about what's been making news in science and tech. Mark Zuckerberg has announced that the future of Facebook may be telepathy. He said, you may not need to use a phone or computer to send someone a message in the future. You'll just think about it and they'll experience it. Now, you may not know this, but you can actually use Facebook telepathy right now. And I'm going to show you how. The first step, think about wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> Google have released their access to their neural network, Deep Dream, an image system that studies pictures to work out what's in them. For instance, a dog or a building. And then overlays what it thinks it sees back into the photo. To boil this down, it's amazing because it's kind of seeing how computers think. To demonstrate, and we're not making any of this up, this is a picture of a real koala. Oh. And here's how it looks through Deep Dream. <laughs> now here's where it gets really fun. Some genius processed a scene from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas through Deep Dream. Let's have a look at the original. I recall one night in a place called The Matrix. There I was. Mother of God, there I am. And here's the deep dream version. I recall one night in a place called the Matrix. There I was. Mother of God, there I am. Holy f <laughs> On the plus side, we can now solve the question, do androids dream of electric sheep? The answer is no, they dream of tripped out koalas. <laughs> Uber have launched Uber Drive, a new mobile game that helps real Uber drivers develop their navigation skills and lets prospective drivers experience what working for Uber is like. Current Uber drivers have said, the game's pretty accurate, but it needs more projectile vomiting and spontaneous urination. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny combination of words, spontaneous urination. <laughs> and finally, making news tomorrow, all the residents of Earth will come together and vote for a relatively unknown 22-year-old named James to become the first president of Earth when it's discovered James is actually solely responsible for making every internet mem ever. <laughs> Super startup Uber recently turned five. What started out as two cars on the streets of San Francisco has exploded into a multi-billion dollar company serving millions of users around the world. Here to share her Uber expertise is that girl you met in an Uber pool. Hey, so late. I took an Uber pool here and we had to drop off like 20 foreign exchange students at three different CBSs. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a very inefficient trip, but I guess it was cheap, right? Because it's Uber pool? Well, I ended up paying $60 to go three miles, but I got a date out of it, so it's all good. Swipe right. Up top. <laughs> I hear you use Uber every day, is that correct? Well, uh, I kind of need to in order to get to work and stuff. The judge says I'm not allowed to drive anymore, so yeah. <laughs> oh, did you do something bad? I mean, it's like no big deal. I just like to Snapchat myself singing Taylor Swift while I drive, and I may or may not have destroyed some public property. <laughs> so tell us why you love Uber so much. Oh, it's perfect. You just press a button and your own personal minion shows up and drives you wherever you want. <laughs> it's beyond amazing. Like, I literally can't even with how not basic, hashtag awesome, hands up emoji, comma in a skin tone. <laughs> that was like textual vomit. It must be really awesome then. Yeah, I mean, you know, like any app, it has its glitches. Sometimes the GPS tracker is wrong and it can be hard to find your driver. Oh, like the other night, I got into one of the nine Priuses on the street and I was like, oh my God, it's Drake. And Drake was like, get out of my car. This isn't an Uber. My name is Tom. And I was like, okay, Drake. So basically the GPS tracking needs some work. Right. Also, surge pricing is a serious issue. Even if I confirm a seven-fold fare increase, I'm probably so drunk I'd order sushi from a gas station mini-mart. You know what I mean? Maybe. <laughs> so what can Uber do to make the next five years better than the last? Oh, they should totally Uberize everything. I actually came up with some ideas for how the company can expand its offerings. <laughs> Uber 
toilet, transporting you to nearby toilets. Or in a pinch, serves as a makeshift toilet. <laughs> For parents with young kids, Uber Sitter. All the background check safety and reliability of an Uber driver in a mobile childcare system. <laughs> or Uber Rito, because who doesn't love all you can eat Mexican in standstill traffic? You know, I've got to be honest, I'm not quite sure Uber will be too keen of these. Uh, but great, I haven't shared my favorite idea with you yet. What's that? Uber Games, a post-apocalyptic Uber pool in which the riders fight to the death. Horrifying. <laughs> what does the winner get? A promo code for free Uber Games for life. Yeah! <laughs> I gotta go. My Uber driver is calling me. Hi, is this Parasim Magtang Gol Saroish? <laughs> Thank you to that girl you met in an Uber pool! <laughs> So Google Cardboard is basically a VR headset made from cardboard with two lenses and a magnet. Once assembled, you can hold it up like this, place a smartphone in, and you actually have your own VR headset. Our friends at Google have helped us out with some exclusive Tomorrow Show Google Cardboard headsets, which we'll be giving away. All you need to do, <laughs> yes, it's real. All you <laughs> All you need to do to win is like our Facebook page. We'll be drawing weekly winners all July, so go and click like now. And if you want to get more information on everything that's happening in VR and its related industries ranging from gaming to medical applications, check out this month's edition of Wired Magazine, available at your local magazine rack and online now. <laughs> Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg announced he thinks telepathy may become a reality one day and we'll be able to share our experiences with friends just by thinking about them. For more information on this, let's cross live to our future correspondent, Ant Simpson. Ant, where are you? Hello, Gray. I'm in the future, <laughs> the year 2035. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Are they some kind of, like, future x-ray glasses or something? What? what? Oh, no, sorry, no, I was at a fancy dress party. Sorry, I left those on. Yeah, sorry. So, and yeah. is Zuckerberg right? Telepathy is a thing in the future? Well, Gray, let me just say this. Wow, it worked. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just told my brain to tell your brain that it works. <laughs> this is so cool. How do I send a message back? Oh, no, you can't because you don't have the software update. Uh, but think of it like a Facebook wall in your head that uh, you can't turn off. It's really cool. Check this out. All right, check this out. Oh, oh, my, whoa, oh, ho, ho, this, is, this is amazing. What am I seeing? What is, I can see your thoughts, but it, it's just a, a loop of a cat playing a piano. <laughs> yep, I told you, it's exactly like Facebook. <laughs> but, Surely people in the future use this incredible technology to do more than just send stupid animal videos to each other. <laughs> oh, Gray, of course they do. They also send porn. Do you want some? No, I... No. <laughs> Watch Sweet it. porn for you. Watch yeah. yourself. I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry, Gray. I'm getting a telepathic text from my girlfriend. She's... Oh, she needs her keys. Yeah, come on, babe. Hey. Hi, so, hi. Gray, this is, uh, this is Samantha. Oh, hi, Samantha. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. All right, I'll see you, baby. Okay. You go. No. Uh, uh. Oh. Oh. Go, 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 oh. go, go, go. Take it, go. I'll see oh. you tomorrow. Sorry, Gray. Oh, look, she seems like a really nice girl. But you know what? <laughs> I've always really liked the name Samantha as well. I know you have. That's why you named her Samantha. Oh. <laughs> That's oh, right, no. oh no! I'm dating your daughter. Oh, 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 oh you've got to be kidding me! Boom! Oh, Aunt, <laughs> yeah! You, you dirty bastard! Uh, that was Ant Simpson, our future correspondent, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. That's great! Oh, thank you. I came to the I came to the past with your daughter. I can't work. I can't work. I can't work. I'm very excited for this next guest. He's part of a real startup success story. What began as a group of three University of Southern California robotic engineering students has turned into a multi-million dollar 3D printing company, claiming the world's first all-in-one 3D printer that can scan, copy, and print items like a fax machine. Please welcome to the show, Jens Vindal. Good to see you. Thank you, thank you. Please have a seat. Oh, 
welcome. Thank you so much for coming along. Thank you so much for your invite. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Now tell me, there was three of you studying robotics. How did this company come about? Well, we were all like building robots in the robotics labs of USC, and you know these robots drive against walls. They break parts, um, and 3D printers uh, were our tools to repair them. And since we saw that uh, there's such a good opportunity uh, to, to repair robots with it, we, could, we thought if we commercialize a product like this, we could repair everything with it and we can prototype everything with it. So to give everyone an understanding of what we're talking about, we could put in an object such as this. This is the DeLorean. It's made out of Lego, but it's the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Best documentary ever, of course. <laughs> we could put that inside. It would scan this object, I could theoretically email that to my parents in Australia and they could print out in a plastic an exact replica of that. Is that right? Right, that's right. It will be scanned in here and then directly faxed into another machine uh, that can be anywhere in the world, in Australia for example, and then within like one, two, three hours you will have a plastic replica of your product that you put in this machine. I mean, this is, this is absolutely incredible. Some of these products not only are just fun, Tell me about this. I mean, it's, you guys are actually helping humanity. That's a prosthetic hand. Right. So um, we, we first, you know, started out with like, just like replicating um, or building robotic parts. And then uh, we moved further towards like um, other like um, uh, print outs um, for other industries. And one, uh, one uh, is for some prosthetic hands. So the medicine um, um, field is very interesting. We print out the sand within like 24 hours to sample it. This uh, uh, cost us uh, less than $50 in, in the making. Um, and uh, this way, we, we equip uh, a lot of uh, uh, kids with uh, prosthetic hands, because especially kids need like, new prosthetic hands yeah. since they're growing out on a, on a monthly basis. I hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm just, it, things like that are inspiring. I think it's a really great success story of, of what you guys are leading to. Now, you've got a number mem another member of your team here. Do you want to introduce them on? Yes. So, Lucas, um, he's our. Um, this uh, is Lucas Director Lock, ladies operation. and gentlemen. <laughs> Very nice Good to, to see you, my friend. Please have All a right. seat. So tell me, Lucas, what is your, what is your role within the company? Uh, so my role uh, is to oversee the operations of the company. Um, I came in at a time um, where we really needed to raise capital. Um, I saw what uh, some of the other co-founders had done before, uh, namely uh, Kai Chang and uh, Christian Siajian. Um, really, you know, w when, when I came on, I was very impressed uh, with the work that had already been done and what's uh, being continually done by AI or robotics here. Um, this was a team that came together with an idea at first in a basement, um, and then it got to a point where we were, you know, operating uh, like a large corporation, um, sourcing components overseas, getting the right prices, um, assembling it uh, in a real uh, manufacturing plant, having that shift taking care of logistics, um, from sales to marketing, operations, customer support, human resources. Um, so there's been a lot of growth um, yeah. over the last few years. What um, do you think about the music industry? Um, <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> the reason for my question is we did a little bit of research on you. Mm -hmm. You're quite the piano player. Can we play this clip? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a prosthetic hand playing that. That was your <laughs> hand. Those were my hands. Now, not, uh, only, <laughs> not only did we find that, can we play this clip? <laughs> <laughs> that is an upside down cello. Yeah, yeah. So we. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, back in these days, I broke a lot of cellos. And uh, we, we were. <laughs> And we actually tried to like start the 3D printing a full cello, um, just coming out of the printer in little parts and like assembling together, so I could repair my cello in the future. If you want more information, please go and have a look at AIORobotics.com. I want to say thank you so much to Lucas and Jens. <laughs> thank you very much. Massive thanks to our futurist ensemble, the production team, tonight's guests our live audience. <laughs> also a massive thank you to our sponsors, Surfair and FileTrack, sharing files securely with anyone. 
You can catch me live January 22nd in Irvine. I'll be hosting LA Tech's Got Talent July 26th and at Google's office in Venice August 1st. Check out the tomorrowshow.io for more information and I'll see you in the future. Good night. <laughs> But I also love filmmaking, and that was kind of my dream, was to make films about science. Well, wonder no more, as this project is going to put a life-size pineapple at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>